Okay, welcome everyone to Sig Scale. This is April 6, 2023. Please add yourself as an attendee. Okay, uh, for today's today's meeting, I really, what I wanted to do is to, I, I, I wanted to just see if we can push this PR along that LA's got or if we've got any more diagrams that we have to view. Uh, that would be nice. I kind of want to, before we like, I, kind of my purpose here is like, I, I'd like to get this job in so that we can start viewing this stuff based on the graphs and, and so we don't have to look at the the job. So prefer we we hold off on that until we have this this ready. So uh, I'd like to just look at this for a minute. So and see if we can find any, any other ways to push this along. Ale, do you want to talk about this at all? Like where you are and what's what you need next to get this sure. done? <clears throat> so I have uh, posted an update for uh, for the code that worked for me in order to generate those graph. Um, one feedback that we talked about last time was that we want to be selective of, of what metric we are putting on disk so that uh, space is not a concern. So the way I imagine this tool to be working is in three phases. Phase one will just you know do a regex grep of um, of all the build logs dot txt and put put the results into a temporary uh, folder which can be specified from the command line. So this folder need not be exported because it contains all the data. So it can live temporarily in the CI job uh, where this is running. The second phase generates a per week. So it generates a weekly aggregation of whatever metric you specify it to be. Uh, so there is a command line flag, which takes a comma separated list of metrics. Uh, so here we can be selective about uh, the metrics that you have noted in this uh, document. Um, and this generates a weekly aggregation on a separate, well, on a different directory and that directory can be uh, pushed to our storage. So that way, because there is a segregation of phases, we can uh, have, we can have, we can get away from hard coding this selection and, you know, do it through command line flags. And then phase three will just uh, go over phase two's result and it will generate a graph. So phase three is a plotting tool. But the prerequisite for phase three is phase two's uh, result. And similarly, prerequisite for phase two is phase one's result. Okay. This, uh, what you have here is, was what, phase one? No, all three. Oh, you've got all three, okay. Yeah. Um, all three have a separate command, separate sub command. So, I mean, each phase has a separate sub command and I have noted the sub command usage in the PR description. Okay, so this sounds like, well, one one thought comes to mind for me is like, it sounds like whenever, so this is what we want to want at the end. So do you, I, didn't, I haven't gone through this. Have you documented this as part of like how you use this? Yeah, it's in the PR pages. description. Okay, no, but I mean, like in as a, I, it would be also nice to have like an, a markdown document for this because I mean, you have this as listed as phases and, and maybe that's how you implemented it, but this is like how we want to use it as well. Sure, I can add that. I, I mean, it would not be very hard for me to add it. Yeah, please do. I, I would like to have a markdown for this just so it's clear what we're doing here because I, I think you can use this like. Why the way you separate it is such that you can use this in different ways. Maybe it's like if graph is like handy for graphing is handy for like you know doing the weekly aggregates and 
and whatnot. But I just want to be clear, like the the features that are here and, and what it is you need to do to actually get to the, get to them. Correct. So you remember we had this conversation that there are many other use cases for this tool. So I assume that uh, you can use phase one's result to aggregate this on monthly, you know, bi-weekly, whatever um, way you you can you want to analyze this. So this decoupling allows us to be agile in the future and leaves doors open as to what we want to analyze. Okay, makes sense. And find your name, perf report creator. Okay, makes sense. Okay, so we've got the features that we need to make this usable. So last thing is to document. Okay, so then, then we need some reviews, right? This is the other thing we need here. Yeah. Okay. Um, there are uh, There is a couple of open items um, that I would like to take as follow-ups. So one thing um, that, um, that was mentioned in the earlier review is we don't have optimization on um, what jobs we look at. So um, that optimization I can add as a follow-up. Uh, and then the other thing that was mentioned is that this only looks at the periodic jobs right now. We'd like to get to a place where we can also add a pull request. But it, the code seems to be getting huge and I, I want to make little progress by by getting the merges um so we can iterate faster makes sense okay okay we need to get this and then so we can move to the next step in this okay so your sports periodics makes sense lubu do you have any thoughts on this any comments yeah i would just suggest to open an issue on the project infra so we know what the next steps are i think we can we can merge it i don't have a poor uh rights on the repo so i will ask um, somebody else to have a look on it. And um, we can probably create uh, optional uh, job for these two right now. And then we can move to the periodics when we have all the optimization, like uh, look only this week and create uh, the plot only for this week and such. I just wanted to ask, uh, where do you uh, intend to store the data and the plots? Yeah, that was one of the conversations. I think that's an open question. Um, it was suggested that we have a separate repo, like uh, like CI Health, that stores the flakes data and the PR merges data. Um, I think it's fair to ask for separate repo, something like six scale, and we can just uh, store data there. And we'll see if it's sufficient or not in the late, in later. So can you create an issue on the project infra uh, and ask for a new repository to be created? Sure. But just a note, I, I think we, we get to it, this maybe next week or in two weeks because everybody's on holiday these days. So like how um, your job based on what you have here, like how um, how does this, does this get automatically triggered? Like what is our, what is our process for getting it to the point like where this stuff gets auto-populated? I believe that's what, I, yeah. So it's happened to some sort of weekly something, I don't know, some weekly scrape is that. So what is, what's, what would we require to do that? So the first thing is we need to merge this open MR. My understanding is that when, once this PR is merged, it will create a, um, an image, um, cubevert CI image with this uh, code. Then the open items are to, once we have that new repository, uh, we need to add a GitHub workflow or action to call that, uh, basically to use this image um, and call these sub commands. Uh, 
So the first item in that uh, workflow would be to generate results and the subsequent item would be to push the same results on, uh, on, on the GitHub repo. So yeah, this PR lays the groundwork, then we need to add it to the CI workflow to make it automated on a weekly basis. Is there a reason to use GitHub Action and not a, not a pro we, we use for everything else? No, I mean, there's no reason. The, my, I think the CI Health uses GitHub Action. So that's where I got it from, but I'm not too opinionated. Whatever is easier, um, I we can go that route. I'm not against it, but we can help with Pro and we we are not that sure with GitHub Actions. Sure. Yeah, I mean I mean I mean there are some limitations, right? To GitHub Actions, like how much you can use it and, and such. And with Pro yeah. you you are free to use whatever you want from us. Sure. Yeah. Um I I was just using GitHub Action as a placeholder for some CI. Uh, but the idea is to uh, put it in, in some kind of CI automation. I, I haven't dug a lot into um, what features we need from that CI, so I'm, I'm not sure right now which one will be easier. Um, if, if Pro is what we need, then we can go that route. I think the nice nice thing about Pro is that you can actually say, okay, I, I want to execute this on this repository, but I need also this repository to be available in, inside a pod, inside a job. And then you can just create any uh, any script that you can actually test locally. So I like it more, but that's personal opinion. Yeah. Makes sense, makes sense. Yeah. Um... Once we get to that stage, I would like to understand a little bit more uh, on how to do that. Um, if if you can help out in that, we it'll be awesome. We can definitely sure. get some kind of CI automation going with that. Okay, so it sounds like uh, I think I think we've got a clear path for it. So we just need to we need to spend some time reviewing and merging this. And then I think this, the rest is straightforward. We need to get the Git repo and then we just need to wire it up so that this runs periodically. Okay. Sounds good. Hey Ryan, um, yeah. I think we've discovered an, a bug with the, um, with the tool that collects uh, list and get data. Um, I have yet to file, file it, but that's one uh, open item as well for us. Um, so the, the audit tool relies on the client Go Prometheus metrics and Prometheus, the, the client Go Prometheus metrics uh, differentiates list, watch, and get in the URL. That differentiation is missing uh, label selector and um, uh, name field selector. So if a list call is made using field selector or a label selector, then it miscategorizes is it as a get call and we get skewed results because of that. Um, I was about to file a bug for it before this call, but uh, couldn't get to it. I'll do it um, after. How did you notice this? Yeah, this this was from one one of the downstream clusters where this was being misreported. Oh, I see. So you were doing some other testing and you found this. Okay. Yeah, so it was. Yeah, basically we had zero list calls and uh, a lot of get calls, and that did not seem right. And that's and is that correct? Like I um I I. I, so my interpretation has been when you use the field selectors, it, it takes a different code path than list. 
but I don't know if it was, I don't know how to correctly class, classify it. So I always consider it to be get, but so like is, um, so like what is doing the, the classification in this case? Like, um, it, like, so, cause basically list is get, right? It's the same thing. It's just, it's just more, it's just like a, a less specific get. Correct. Right. Yes. So, so in so a I get, how should what I expect, it? yeah, in a get, what I expect is the URL name is uh, resource name, namespace, whatever the cement, cube semantic is, and the name and the namespace of the resource. That's the URL I expect. Um, in a list call, the URL will just be resource missing namespace and name. So that will return everything under that resource. For a label selector and a field selector, it gets tricky because okay. after the resource, you mention label selector equals to something and field selector equals to something. Uh, I mean, we can have a separate categorization, but my understanding was that cube semantics consider those as lists. Okay. Let's see how I should write this. So we can, the verb is still get. Um, let me just do it like this. All right, so we'll say like with, with fields like this being reported as get. Okay, I think it's fine. Like to me, it's like, I mean, I, I don't know if there's like an official definition at all, but if um, there is, that's great. If not, it doesn't matter as long as we define it. So this, this is fine. Okay. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Leigh. All right, I'm gonna to go to the last topic here. I have not looked at this, but uh, Brian did, let's see. So this merged, I need to look at this. Because I believe, the Prometheus stack was fixed. I don't remember how to get to it. Uh, we still need the IP, don't we? I think we don't. I think that's what we're missing, right? So I think he's. I think this. He was able to get this working, but we don't have the IP yet. I think that's where we left off. Unless it's somewhere in here. No, I don't know. Okay. I think I'm just going to leave that for next time. We need to. I swear I've asked for this. Ah, okay, here we go. So we do have it. All right, sweet. So I think we're back with online with the dedicated cluster. This looks, let's take a look. Is there any data showing up? Okay, cool. We do have some data. Oh, great. This is back online. Okay, so we've got our we've got our dashboard again for uh, for the dedicated cluster. I don't know why this data isn't showing. It doesn't make sense. Do we run? This looks good. Do we run any jobs against the cluster? Yeah, we do, but maybe they're not working and I haven't checked in there. Okay, so it's this one. Okay, well, let me explain it. We're just the jobs filling. Where are we going? 
going wrong here? So, is this the error? What is this? Kill minus nine. What is it? So we do the make cluster clean. Looks like we start the cluster and then we do nothing. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so we do get it. We do get it up. Do get the cluster up. Okay, so this is from the so from the load generator we do what we delete the, this this is the first this is the primer I think yeah and then what it doesn't make any sense so we uh, we for some reason we exit and do make cluster clean right there. Oh, okay. I don't know what this is. It seems a little strange. So this looks to be part of the same log. Okay. Well, that might explain it. So I think we're our dedicated our load generator is having an error, and it's we're not able to do anything. Okay, I'm gonna look at this one. Let's see. Yeah, same thing. Let's see, this is supposed to create a hundred. And I'm guessing we're going to fail the same way. Yeah. So there's the primer. And we just clean up. Looks like. Okay. Okay, we might have a bug somewhere. Okay, well, I'm going to need to address this. So, um, Ryan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had some questions regarding the dashboards that you have. Sure. So does this dashboard show the same data that um, that is being output in the perf report, perf report generator? Or is it different? Same data like um like you, you're asking like how we, how, why, or how, how was it we came about to get like, to get these here? Like what made us choose these? No, no, no. What I'm saying is we talked about the new tool that's generating those charts, right? Um, right. I am wondering if the data behind this dashboard is the same as the data behind those charts. Yeah, um, it, sh it should be. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's similar. Um, I mean, it's not like, like, we're only going to get a small, we're only going to get a small snapshot here, though. Like, you're only going to get, I, I don't know how much, I don't know how much we can support. I mean, I don't, I don't know if we're going to get. I don't know if it's going to allow us to go far enough back to look at some of the stuff, but so we could tech. Well, okay, so it's it, it has it's using the same data, but it's like, um, because like you think about it, right? Like we're just scraping Prometheus, and then the audit tool just takes Prometheus and put dumps into standard out, and then we're scraping mm -hmm. it from standard out into building some graphs from it. So okay. basically, what we're doing is like, um, with Prometheus here, it's right. It's the same thing. Like we're we're just doing. We're just going from Prometheus to Grafana. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, the reason why I am curious about the data coming into this dashboard is if there is a way to, um, to you know, get the data in this Grafana dashboard exported as JSON files, um, then... Well, then I 
I mean, we could all consolidate on this dashboard, right? And have yeah, this dashboard yeah. as the data representation of our graphing needs. Uh, well, so I don't think that'll work for the um, the pre-submits. It'll only ah, work on I the. See. It'll only work on a dedicated cluster. Yeah, it won't work on the pre-submits because we'll lose the data after the job is done. So it only work on the dedicated one. And assuming, oh wait, I don't, what is that? I think this will give you, no, this maybe. I, I think you can get it. Um, I just don't know, well, there's like no data in here. I mean, let me go to the other one. data. I saw something in here. Okay. There, yeah, there is. I don't, I don't know if there's like a, oh, hey, JSON. No, no, I looked at this earlier. This is just for the, this isn't the, the data. I don't know. Maybe there is. I, I'm not sure, but I like, I, I we would still need the tool to, to do the, the pre submits. And if we're doing it for the pre submits, maybe we, Maybe we do it for the um, for the K cluster as well. Like I, I don't think it. I think there's it's fine. To have yeah, both. yeah. That's that's what I was trying to brainstorm. If there are two separate use cases, and it sounds like there are. Yeah, um, I think there are. So yeah, makes sense. Okay. Well, this is cool. I'm glad we got this up. So when we eventually get this periodic back, I, whatever is going on here at the load generator, we can. We can start looking at that data again. Cool. Okay. Well, I'm going to link this in here actually. Uh, yeah. There we go. Oops. Okay, cool. All right. Well, that's all I had, guys. Uh, if there's anything else you guys want to bring up? Okay, sounds like no. So we've got KubeCon in two weeks. Uh, so I think next week. So assuming we'll meet now next week. Uh, and then we'll, we'll, the following one will be canceled. So. So we'll probably only have uh, so one or two more meetings in, in April. Okay. All right, everyone. Thank you. Have a good day. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, everyone. Bye. All right. Thanks, Leigh. Thanks, Bye -bye. as well. See ya. Bye.